All right, now that both Brian brothers are playing Tacomo irons, I thought since all those irons were built right here in this shop, might be a good time to do a little Brian brothers, what's in the bag, Tacomo iron deep dive. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, since George has now announced that he is playing the Tacomo 301 irons, just like his brother Wesley, thought it would be a good time to kind of review exactly what they've got set up in their bag. A little bit deeper dive by me, since I'm the one who put all those clubs together. So this video, we're gonna talk about two things. First, I'm gonna just talk about the setup of each of their iron configurations, basically giving you all the specs for what I did when we built those irons. Secondly, we're going to take a little deeper dive specifically into the shafts that each of them are using. All right, now first off, real quick, here are the basic specs we did for Wesley and George's Tacomo iron setup. Again, both of them using 301 CB irons. Yes, Wesley is using the 101T in the longer irons, but the majority of them are the 301 CB. Specs on those, we did both of them what I consider standard length, so that's a 38 inch five iron and then moving in half inch intervals up or down from there. We did two degrees flat for Wesley and we did one degree flat for George as far as the lie angle goes. Lofts we kept basically stock standard for both of them. Uh, grip, both of them using super stroke grip, standard size, so again, very similar. Here is where now we get into the big difference between their two setups because they're both using steel shafts, they're both extra stiff, and they're both heavy. But from there, these two shafts that they each use are very different. And that's what the rest of this video is gonna be about. All right, now make sure also you stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna be hitting each of these setups, basically mirroring Wesley and George's setup with that same 301 CB head using each of these shafts. And also while I'm thinking about it, make sure you go down below and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. But before I hit these, real quick, I just wanna talk about bend profile because I think this is really helpful to understand how these shafts are so different. First off, Dynamic Gold X100 Tour Issue. This has, when it comes to bend profile, what I would say is a very traditional looking profile to it. Basically the butt end is the stiffest, the tip end is the softest, and it has that little bit of a trough in the middle. What that indicates is really a shaft that, yes, it's heavy, yes, it's stiff, but it has a little bit of give in the middle of it, so it doesn't necessarily feel boardy. It doesn't feel overly stiff. When you heard Wesley in one of their latest videos talking about why he uses that dynamic gold shaft versus Project X, he said, it feels a little softer, it doesn't feel as boardy. And that's really from this little bit of give in the midsection of it where you're gonna feel it load a little more during the swing. All right, dynamic gold, very traditional, bend profile, very classic. Modus 3 130 in this X-Flex is probably the most unique iron shaft profile you're gonna find, in my opinion, because it has a very unique look to it. Again, most every shaft has that sort of consistent slope to it. But what you find with this shaft, the butt section basically is about the same as the Dynamic Gold, starting kind of up here in stiffness. But whereas the Dynamic Gold gradually moves down and gets softer, this shaft, the Modus 130, essentially stays the same. It doesn't dip down, it just goes in a straight horizontal line all the way through the center, into the midsection, all the way down to the tip. And once we get down to the tip, all of a sudden there is a sharp drop off in the stiffness. So we get what is a shaft that's stiff up here in the butt end, extremely stiff here in the middle section, specifically comparing it to that dynamic gold. But then when we get down in the tip section, it drops off significantly so that the very, very tip of it is actually softer than that dynamic gold shaft. Now, what does that all mean when we have the dynamic gold shaft that kind of looks like this, and we have this Modus 130 that looks like 
this? Well, what we expect to see, or what the manufacturer tells us we should see, and like George said, this MODIS 130 is supposed to give us a little bit higher launch because this tip section has got a little bit more give in it, so we get a little bit more forward deflection and the ball will launch, everything else being equal, a little bit higher. Really good example or way to think about this shaft is to think of probably the most well-known golfer to use this shaft, and that is Sergio Garcia. Sergio Garcia, golfer who hits the ball very low overall. He has a lot of lag in his swing. He holds that wrist angle an extremely long time. So one of the reasons he hits his iron so far is he really de-lofts everything because he holds that angle so long. So a shaft like this that has a little bit more you know, movement down in the tip section to help get the ball up in the air a little more makes perfect sense for a swing like that in order to help him get a little bit more height on an otherwise de-lofted iron. So that is, again, sort of what I would call the perfect player for this kind of shaft because he holds that angle a long time, he's strong, he swings fast, and so this shaft is really kind of designed for that kind of golfer. All right, enough talking. Let's hit some balls and actually see what happens. Again, between these two shafts, this shaft, Dynamic Gold X100, we would expect to launch a little bit lower. It's supposed to be a little more low mid-launch, low mid-spin. Modus 3, 130, supposed to be higher launch, but still with low spin. Let's find out what happens, because again, that's on paper. And what it's supposed to do on paper and what it does in your hands are not always one and the same. All right, X100, Tacoma 301 CB head. Not a terrible start. Now I realize I do not have Wesley or George swing speed, so I'm just going to try my best with these shafts, realizing that they're probably both a little bit stiffer than I need, but... That one was hit pretty solid, I would say. Even though this shaft is very heavy, 130 grams, and it's extra stiff, it doesn't feel like it's hard to swing. In other words, when I swing it, it doesn't feel boardy. I don't feel like I have to really force it, especially in the transition, to make the shaft work. It, it still feels nice, it feels well balanced, and it just feels comfortable. That's it, one more good one, hopefully. Again, these have all been pretty good. They haven't been great, but they haven't been bad. That one felt a little more solid that time. All right, now, while I have hit Dynamic Golds, S300, X100, on many, many occasions. This will only be the second time I have ever hit this Modus 130 shaft. I tried to do this video one other time, and I just couldn't stop hitting the ball a little bit too far right, which was throwing off all the numbers. And so I really want to see if I can today get it on a good start line so we've got a better comparison as far as the launch and the spin goes. So let's see what happens because last time I had a hard time getting that face closed. That's it pretty solid. Again, that was hit solid, but again, it's got just a little 
tiny tail on it to the right. First impressions, or I guess we call this second impression since this is my second time with the shaft, but this shaft feels so much stiffer to me than that X100 shaft. The X100, again, feels like I don't really need to force it to make it work for me. It doesn't feel boardy. This shaft, it just feels very rigid all the way through, even with the understanding that the tip section is softer and drops off in stiffness, in stiffness, I don't really feel that. All I feel is just a very rigid, you know, one piece kind of non-flexing shaft. So again, no one has ever accused me of swinging like Sergio Garcia or George Bryan for that matter. So I may just not be able to make this shaft work quite the way it's supposed to, but let's hit a few more. That was it really pretty darn solid. <laughs> oh goodness, don't use that one. Oh. All right, now I've had to delete a couple with this guy because, well I know, I just feel like I'm having to swing really hard with it. So. I'm gonna slow it down. I'm just gonna try and make typical, usual swing, not trying to force it, and just see what happens and not swing completely out of my shoes. That was really nice. Balance, the golf swing is all about balance. There you go. Okay, here's the numbers real quick. I have to say this go around, again, having tried this video one other time, I was at least more able to get this modus shaft closer to the center line than previously, was still, as you can see, a little bit more right than the dynamic gold, was pretty consistently right, but not as much as last time. And because of that, I think we can use the data and at least get something out of it. Ball speed, you can see the modus was slightly faster, but guess what, I was swinging it harder because I felt like I had to, so the club speed was also faster. So there's why you see a difference there. The efficiency was basically about the same. The launch angle, within half a degree of each other, and again, the modus going further right pretty well accounts for that extra launch angle right there, just because face is a little more open, a little more loft, goes a little further right. Also going along with that, Again, what the mode is supposedly is supposed to do is give you higher launch with lower spin, but for me at least, as you can see here, the launch and the spin both got higher. The launch by a little bit, the spin was really 500, I would say, is at least a significant amount where I don't think the spin was actually lowered by this shaft. Just looking at the dispersion, also you may look at that and say, oh, the modus looks like it was a tighter dispersion, but I had to toss three shots with the modus. I hit three bad ones or ones I didn't want to use. Dynamic gold, I only hit one where I didn't use it. So overall dispersion, definitely for me, better with the dynamic gold. And I think that makes sense because as I said, as I was hitting them, the dynamic gold felt comfortable. It felt like I could swing it with my regular swing. It didn't feel like I had to force it to make the ball go. The modus just feels extremely stiff to me again. Stiff in the butt section, extremely stiff in the midsection. And yes, even though the tip section supposedly is much softer, that didn't register to me. I did not notice the tip section moving around. It just felt like a very stiff shaft all the way through and I really felt like I had to swing extra. I had to put extra power into it to try and get it to bend, to try and get that feel that I look for when I swing. All right, there you go. Wesley and George Bryant's Tacomo iron setup again. Very similar until you get to the shaft and then they become very different feeling golf clubs. So two takeaways from this. One, realizing that even though two shafts may have the same weight, even though, even though they may both say that they are extra stiff, the way that those shafts actually feel and play can be very different because as we've seen here, this Modus 130 is a completely different animal from that dynamic gold. The other takeaway I would say is 
This shaft supposedly in the marketing materials is supposed to be higher launch but lower spin. And I just want you guys to be extremely wary of that kind of claim because in general, golf shafts do not work that way. You can't have higher launch and lower spin at the same time. They are connected. If the launch goes up, the spin goes up and vice versa. So unless we're talking about drivers where we're changing actual impact position on the head, those two numbers are going to be closely related. And I think to think otherwise is really more marketing hype than it is reality. Hey, if you're interested in a fitting, in a custom build, in a repair, if you'd like a custom built set of Tacoma irons, I will leave all my contact information as always down in the description so you can get in contact with me. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I will see you next time. Take care.